Right now, one of the things we're starting to see the rise of in the world of video games is definitely cloud gaming. You have Microsoft getting involved with Project X Cloud. You have Google with Google Stadia. You have Amazon with Luna. A lot of these cloud gaming services are starting to pop up and they seem to be becoming a bit popular with gamers. It offers a different way to play the world of video games without having to have a traditional console or a traditional game purchase. And some people like it and some people don't. There's definitely drawbacks to it. There's definitely advantages to it but now Nintendo after this latest Nintendo Direct is obviously getting involved in the world of cloud gaming we learned about two games coming to the Nintendo switch in North America that will be available via the cloud hitman 3 and control and a lot of people are wondering is cloud gaming on the Nintendo switch a good thing or a bad thing what does this mean for the future of games coming to the Nintendo switch and how will this impact how the Nintendo switch is perceived and I think there's a lot of stuff to unpack with this so in today's video I basically want to talk about what is happening with cloud gaming on the Nintendo switch I think there definitely are some negatives when it comes to cloud gaming but I also think there are some positives when it comes to it on the switch as well so that's what I want to sort of explore in this video so sit back relax make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button if you haven't yet and let's talk about cloud gaming on the Nintendo switch and figure out whether it's a good thing or a bad thing so like I said, during this latest Nintendo Direct, we were introduced to two games coming to the Nintendo Switch via the cloud. One of them is already available, that being Control, and Hitman 3 will be coming out next year for the Nintendo Switch with a cloud version of the game. And really, this was a big surprise. We have seen cloud gaming actually happen in Japan on the Switch with three games releasing. You had Fantasy Star Online 2, you had Resident Evil 7, and you had Assassin's Creed Odyssey, all released in Japan from a company named Ubisoft that is doing cloud-based gaming for the Nintendo Switch, but now they are bringing it over to North America and adding in more games to the repertoire. Now, before we even really get into the sort of the positives and the negatives, I want to talk about what has actually been happening with these companies when it comes to Remedy, who of course is behind control, and Ubitus themselves. They are the company that is of course putting cloud games on the system. Now, in a recent interview with Nintendo Life, Thomas Puha of Remedy actually said the following about control being on the system. I think it's safe to say there would be no control on the Nintendo Switch without the cloud. We did dedicate some time a while ago to doing some due diligence on what it would take to produce a Switch port with an external partner, but deemed it not possible for a variety of reasons. The bottlenecks are all of those things you mentioned, technical, finance, and personnel. It's not a question of want. Of course, Remedy and 505 Games want control on many platforms, the Switch included. If only it would be that easy. Trust me, one of the hardest things in making games is all the compromises you have to make. Getting games to very different hardware platforms is really time consuming and tough. Our Northlight engine is not really built to work on the Switch, which I'd say goes for most engines. So you have to spend a significant amount of time engineering to make that happen. Then you have to think about if all the work is worth it for just one game, when you should be getting the engine ready for next gen and the future. We would rather ensure that our tools and teams are ready for future games as well as they can be, rather than going back and doing the kind of work that would be a very one-off thing. Now, some people saw that comment as sort of Remedy being a bit lazy. Oh, we don't want to go back and engineer our engine to work on the Nintendo Switch. But I do think that some of the things in that statement are a bit true. And we'll get sort of more into it as we go along. But really, I thought this was a very interesting comment because it sort of shows the mindset that we're going to talk about in the positives and the negatives things about when it comes to third party companies wanting to put their games on the Nintendo Switch, but having to decide whether they're going to natively port this game or or do it via the cloud. Now, obviously the biggest component when it comes to cloud gaming on the Nintendo Switch is the company Ubitus, which is of course the company that has done all the cloud-based games on the Nintendo Switch. They actually put out a press release and said some very interesting things about the console and how they're going to look at things in the future. The CEO of Ubitus said the following, players can seamlessly transition between TV or handheld mode according to their environment, select high definition picture quality, and enable realistic features such as ray tracing rendered by high-end GPUs in the cloud. No more worries of storage limitations and wait time for downloads, installations, or updates. Players can simply turn on their Nintendo Switch, connect to the internet, select the game, and immediately enjoy the latest and greatest gameplay. 
We are extremely pleased to have the opportunity to work with a world-class game publisher such as 505 Games. We are thrilled to present their most recent mega title, Control Ultimate Edition Cloud version, to a Nintendo Switch global audience, featuring the highest gameplay quality and performance, including ray tracing. We will continue our efforts to bring more and more exciting major titles to the cloud and share with gamers around the world. Now this company, like I said, is based out of Japan. They started getting a lot of press when they did the Nintendo Switch ports of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Fantasy Star Online 2, and Resident Evil 7 for the company, but they were restricted to simply just Japan at that time. But now it seems like this company is growing to the point of where they can offer cloud gaming pretty much worldwide. The cloud services are currently available for North America, some parts of Europe, Asian countries, and etc. And they're looking to expand into more territory as they go on. So I feel like this really lays down the groundwork for the discussion of cloud gaming on the Nintendo Switch. And like I said, it's something that we definitely need to explore. I've seen a lot of people who are for this technology and a lot of people who are against this technology. You would think that someone like me would be against these sort of things considering, well, it's essentially a rental of a game and I'm more of a physical collector, but it's not really that cut and dry for me. And I don't feel like it should be that cut and dry for anyone, especially looking at the current video gaming landscape now first off let's talk about the negatives of cloud gaming on the Nintendo switch like I said this is essentially a rental of a game because well you don't really own any sort of physical media you are essentially paying for a license to just play the games and roughly have access to this game for two years when you're done with the game, you can't sell it, you can't trade it in, which of course you can't do with any digital version of the game, but this really feels like a bit less ownership than a standard digital game. Of course, the cloud needs an active and strong internet connection in order to play these games with low latency and just to run properly. And surprisingly, a lot of people in the United States still have crappy internet. So for those people who wanna play these games on the Nintendo Switch, honestly, they're pretty much just left out in the cold. Of course, the most interesting negative thing about the rise of cloud in the Nintendo Switch would be the fact that, well, we don't really know anything about how long these servers are going to remain online. Take Control, for instance, which right now is a $40 game on the Nintendo Switch. What if you buy the cloud version in a year or two from now, you want to play it again, but for some reason it's taken off the server or the server is down or Ubitus goes out of business and takes everything with it. There are definitely some mysteries with cloud gaming just because of how early in its life cycle it is, especially on the Switch, and I feel like these are very valid things to bring up. Of course, you have a whole nother aspect of it, the preservation aspect. A company like Limited Run Games can't pick up control and release a cartridge of it on the Switch because it's not designed to work on the system natively, meaning that once these games' servers go down, the Switch versions of these games are lost forever. Now technically, the Switch version of the game doesn't really exist in the first place because it's just cloud-based stuff, but that's a whole nother rabbit hole that we'll have to go down another day. Now with all that being said on the negative aspect of things, I do think that there are a ton of positives that we need to explore with this as well, especially when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, because at the end of the day, really all that matters are games and what games are coming out and what games are going to be available on the system. And that's what the cloud is going to allow people to do is play games that they wouldn't normally have access to on their Nintendo Switch without it. Going back to what Remedy said about control and the engine being used for it is really one thing that stuck in my mind. Then you have to think about if all the work is worth it for just one game. A rebuttal I see a lot of people bringing up about the cloud on the Nintendo Switch is, well look at The Witcher 3 and Doom on the Nintendo Switch. These games were designed natively for the console and they were really good versions and you would be 100% correct. I loved The Witcher 3 on the Nintendo Switch and I loved Doom 2016, which was really 2017 on the Nintendo Switch as well. But you also have to factor in that it took a lot of time for those games to come over to the system. And let's be real, they looked great for Nintendo Switch games, but compared to the PS4 and the Xbox One versions, I mean, there were definitely downgrades that were made. Plus, speaking of Doom, Doom Eternal came out earlier in 2020 for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch owners are still waiting for a screenshot, a video, or a release date for Doom Eternal on the Switch, which I think is safe to say is not going to be seen until 2021 now. 
Things like cloud gaming, as Ubitus said, will allow technology such as ray tracing to work on the Switch, which to me isn't a big deal, but I know for a lot of people it would be, and could allow for greater graphical fidelity than we're seeing done with natively based games. And although you might say, well, wouldn't every company just go this route with third party games, turning the Nintendo Switch in just to a cloud based system, I don't think that would necessarily be the case for one main reason, money. By offering people a game at a physical and digital retail outlet and not having to worry about a cloud-based version of the game, you honestly stand to make a lot more money by designing a game natively for the Switch than you would be going through the cloud service because that money goes into your pocket without having to worry about a middleman. So while yes, I'm sure some companies would just go the cloud route with some games, they honestly stand to make a lot more money going a traditional route if it's feasible to get the engine or whatever they are using running on the Nintendo Switch. And hey, now it looks like Hitman 3, a game nobody expected to come to the Switch, could be a day-in version with the other versions of the game, right? And I think that's the biggest takeaway I have from the rise of cloud gaming on the Nintendo Switch, and that would have to be options. If every third party game ends up just going the cloud based route, then yeah, I'd be severely disappointed as it does limit a lot of what the Switch can do without requiring an internet connection, but I honestly don't think that's going to be the case. I would much rather have an option to play a game than not being able to play the game on the Switch at all, and if the cloud version is the only way it can be done, then so be it. If it starts to overtake everything, then yes, we would have a problem, but I feel like Nintendo will continue to upgrade the Nintendo Switch so that it allows for additional power to be harvested and things like DLSS technology to be utilized on it, thus making porting some of these games over a bit easier for the developers should they go the traditional route. And I do feel like developers will want to utilize the traditional route because of the money aspect of it. At the end of the day, I think cloud gaming is a very interesting thing. It's essentially allowing games to come over to the Nintendo Switch that nobody would have really expected. So really for me, I think the positives outweigh the negatives when it comes to the rise of cloud gaming on the Nintendo Switch. Obviously with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X coming out, that technology gap is going to get even wider and some games might not be able to run natively on the Switch. So if you could have a version of the game, even if it's a cloud version of the game or no version of the game, wouldn't you rather have the option to play it as well at the end of the day nobody's forcing you to buy these games it's simply just an option and if they're running well and you have a good internet connection and you play your nintendo switch a lot at home i think these experiences could be very solid experiences i played the demo of control and my experience with the game was actually very positive it looked great and it played great and there wasn't much latency in terms of controls so i don't think cloud gaming on the nintendo switch is necessarily a black or white issue it's a positive thing or a negative thing because there's a lot of gray area and a lot of questions that we still don't know but at the end of the day if it's allowing games to come to the switch that normally wouldn't come to the system i honestly think it's a very interesting option and as long as it remains an option instead of the standard i could see cloud gaming become somewhat popular on the system and i think it would be a good thing for all parties involved but those are just my thoughts on cloud gaming things i've discovered from it and things that i just basically wanted to talk about so let me know in the comments section down below what you think think of the rise of cloud gaming on the Nintendo Switch? Is this something that you would be willing to give a chance to, to at least check out some of these games? Do you think it is the antichrist of video games because you don't technically own the game? But I mean, really, you don't really technically own a lot of games nowadays. I mean, what's a disc? You still have to install everything on there. That's a discussion for a whole nother day though. But as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel as well. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.